I watched players in all elos from bronze to diamond and found a few common mistakes with people's aim. In this guide, my goal is to help you fix your mechanical mistakes to take your gameplay to the next level. So often in my chat, I see a comment like this. I'm hard stuck gold too, and I can't rank up because my aim is so bad. Yet almost never when I watch a gold player, is it their raw aim that's holding them back. Instead, it's usually small mechanical mistakes that just slightly relate to aim. So let's talk about how we can fix these issues step by step. The first and most basic step to fixing your aim is getting your crosshair in the perfect vertical plane so that all of your adjustments can happen horizontally. Here's what I mean by that. Once your crosshair is perfectly at head level, it should never go away from this when you're holding an angle. As I shoot these bots here, notice that my crosshair is staying in the same horizontal plane the entire time. Never once am I moving my crosshair up and down, and the only adjustments that I'm making are from left to right. Now, of course, this is more difficult to do when you're playing on two different planes in an actual map. If I jump on top of this box here, you'll see that there is not one perfect vertical plane depending on how close or far away the bot is. And that's something that you're gonna have to practice when you're holding an angle. Get familiar with the maps and find where the head height is for each different angle that you're holding. The second step is understanding where you should be placing your crosshair relative to the angle that you're holding. So when you're holding an angle, there's a few things to consider. What type of peak is the enemy gonna make? And what are your reaction times like? One of the biggest problems that I see with low to mid elo players is that they literally hold pixels when holding an angle. As you can see right now, I'm currently holding one small pixel. And if there's an enemy that swings me, there's no way that I'm gonna react in time to click and not have to move my crosshair. Instead, I should be holding my crosshair according to my reaction times and how the enemy's gonna peek. So if the enemy peeks, it's likely that he's gonna peek wide and I'm not gonna be able to react until the enemy's about right here. So as a result, this is where I should be holding my crosshair. That way I don't have to move my mouse at all and all I have to do is click. It's like they walk into our crosshair. A pro player that's notorious for having amazing crosshair placement is TSM Sabrosa. Let's take a look at one of these clips so I can show you in further detail. Detail. What I want you to notice is how wide Sabrosa is holding his crosshair here. For one, because he knows how wide the enemy is going to peek, and for two, he's playing according to his reaction time. Boom. Boom. Literally doesn't even have to adjust his crosshair there. Just insane, insane crosshair placement and click timing. Unlucky that he didn't get the ace. <laughs> the third step is realizing how important movement is in relation to your aim. There's quite a bit to cover here with movement, so let's start with what we talked about earlier, walk peeking into angles. I want you to notice how slow the enemy jet is walking here and how easy it is for me to click on their head because they're peeking so slowly. And now, let's watch the same exact thing, but when the enemy jet makes a good peek and a fast peek. Notice how much more difficult it is for me to click on their head at the right time. Here's what this shift walk peeking looks like from the shooter's perspective. Super easy to hit. And here's what a good peek looks like letting go of shift. If you're worried about making noise while doing this peek, it's important to understand this. Notice how I'm shift walking right now, but let's say I wanna clear this angle on my left over here on graffiti, right? When I let go of shift right now, and quickly stop, I'm fast peeking for one, but for two, I'm not making any noise either. I'm gonna keep my hand off of shift the entire time and show you guys that you can move without holding shift and not making any noise if you just do it for a step or two. So look, small step, no noise, small step, no noise, small step, no noise, small step, etc., etc. And then notice how it takes a couple steps to make that actual footstep. This is a great habit to start to clear your angles one by one, but not slow walk into each angle. The next aspect we need to talk about with movement is counter strafing. At this point in Valorant, I think most of us realize why crouch peeking is bad. And if you don't, it's because you're committing yourself to a 1v1 with no escape plan. A lot of lower elo players that I watch will unbind their crouch key to prevent this from happening. But even though these low players don't commit to a crouch spray when they're fighting since they have it unbound, they end up standing completely still, which effectively does the same thing. So if we look at the practice bots here, you'll notice that they're standing completely still. This makes the targets extremely, extremely easy to hit to go from one to another. But let's go to the settings real quick and turn on strafe bots. Notice how much harder they are to hit once they're strafing. This is effectively you when you're counter strafing versus standing completely still or when you're crouch spraying. When you're crouch spraying or standing still, you're an easy target to hit. And when you're counter strafing, it makes it a lot more difficult. A very extreme example and pretty funny one at that is Ferrari peeking. Now, if you don't know what Ferrari peeking is, it's basically swinging as obnoxiously wide as possible as you can 
and when the opponent crouch sprays, it literally makes them look like a complete idiot. Here's an example. Now my goal here isn't to encourage you to start Ferrari peeking in Valorant, that's not going to help you at all, but it's to prove how bad of a habit crouch spraying or standing still when you're shooting really is. At this point, we've established all of the problems that the majority of Valorant players have when it comes to aiming and aiming mechanics. So I came up with a 10 minute warm up or practice routine that you can do every single day before your games to help you guys improve with these issues. When you make your way into the range, make sure you select breach as your agent. Turn on the practice bots and make your way into one corner of the range. Take out your breach ult and ult all the bots into one corner of the range. At this point, shoot two of the bots that made their way into the corner so that they spawn back in the center. And now all you have to do is shoot from one bot to the next and use those two bots that will spawn every single time. But what's really, really important that you do is that you counter strafe between every single shot in the range. It will look something like this. Another thing that you can do to work on your counter strafing is make your way over to this pole on the right side of the range. From here, you just want to use this as your guide to counter strafing. Do the same thing with the breach ult and go back and forth between the two bots, counter strafing from one side of the pole to the other each time you get a kill. For the next part of the warm up routine, you're going to want to do the skills test on medium with a phantom. The same concept applies to the thing that we just did with the breach ult. Between each shot, you want to counter strafe and aim for as many targets as you can. My goal every single time I warm up is to get between 25 and 30 on medium. After you achieve your goal on medium, take out a vandal and switch the bots to hard. From here, you should set a very similar goal. For me, it's always 15 to 20 on hard bots and keep doing this until you feel warm. Remember, it's super important to counter strafe. Sure, your strafe should be a lot shorter when you're doing the hard bots, but make sure you're doing it, otherwise this isn't gonna be useful at all. Last but not least, after you feel super comfortable in the range, take it to a death match and really hone in on not crouching and not standing still when you're shooting. When you're practicing in this game, it's really important to transition from low stress environments like the range, the medium stress environments like deathmatch or unrated to high stress environments like ranked. And the only way to ever get comfortable in those high stress environments is to work your way up and put yourself in that scenario over and over and over to eventually form those good habits. Hopefully this guide made you realize that your raw aim probably isn't your issue and rather it's the mechanics revolved around aim like movement, crosshair placement, and a few other things as well. If you guys found the video helpful, please leave a like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. If you didn't know, I stream live on Twitch every single day around 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Make sure you go drop a follow and check us out while we're live. Have a good one, guys, and check out one of these other amazing videos on our channel here.